Okay, thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure for me to be here today and to present to you the work of EURADOS, the European Radiation Dosimetry Group. Um, well, since the early 1980s, when EURADOS was founded, the mission is to promote research and development in dosimetry and to contribute to harmonization in dosimetric practice. Now, who is EURADOS? First of all, there are many answers to this question. The first is, well, EURADOS has, uh, consists of voting members, more than 70 voting members at the moment, from 30 countries all over Europe. Um, a voting member means, in our terminology, an institutional member. So those are universities, research centers, dosimetry services, and so on and so forth, who have interest in the dosimetry of ionizing radiation. Uh, EURADOS is organized by a board of officers. We have the chair, the vice chair, secretary, and treasurer. Uh, I should also mention, it's not written here, that EURADOS is a legal entity, a charity, actually, under German law. And the office is currently operated at the Helmholtz Center in Munich, Germany. Uh, we get a lot of advice from the EURADOS Council. The EURADOS Council currently consists of 12 members. Again, you see the, the map of Europe, so we try to, to cover as many countries from Europe as possible. Um, and we have working groups. And the working groups actually do all the work. Currently, U EURADOS has eight active working groups, and let's go through it because it al already explains to you the various topics where the symmetry plays a role. We have a working group on harmonization of individual monitoring. I come to this a bit later. One on environmental dosimetry, computational dosimetry, internal dosimetry, radiation dosimetry and radiotherapy, retrospective dosimetry, dosimetry in high energy radiation fields, and dosimetry in medical imaging. And so individual colleagues, scientists who are interested to contribute to the overall mission of EURADOS, they organize themselves within these working groups. And currently, the database of EURADOS lists about 500 scientists who contribute in various ways in the different working groups to the overall goal of EURADOS. Now, I would say one of the most important events of a, in the EURADOS life of a EURADOS member are the annual meetings. And I show you here the participants, how the part number of participants to these meetings develop, because it also shows a little bit how, how the field of dosimetry develops in Europe. So if you look at, on the left side, we started this regular series of annual meetings in 2002. And the first few annual meetings were organized by PTB in Germany, with typically around 80 participants. And since then, we saw a continuous increase of registered uh, participants. And in fact, this year, when EURADOS was in Germany at, at KIT in Karlsruhe, we for the first time had more than 300 registered um, participants. So if you like, if you wish, you can apply a linear extrapolation model or something like that to get an idea how the next 10 years or 20 years look like. But be careful, we know that extrapolation is always tricky. <laughs> well, the visibility of EURADOS, if you are interested in information, you are invited to visit the website of EURADOS. Um, you see the screenshot here of the first page. EURADOS also issues a newsletter if you are interested, please subscribe. It's free of charge. Currently, we have more than 900 subscriptions, subscribers. In order to distribute the, the work or the re results of the work done by the working groups, EURADOS produces reports. EURADOS reports, just to give you the most recent ones from 2016, there was one on challenges in micro and nanodosimetry for ion beam therapy, cancer therapy. There is a report on an international workshop co-organized by EURADOS. And the other report describes 
the results of an irradiation campaign or Eurodos organized at the high energy neutrons facility at Itemba Labs in, South, uh, in Cape Town, South Africa. So those reports are free for download. If you are interested, just go to the website and download. We also try to, well, not try, we also publish our results in the peer-reviewed scientific literature. It's not necessary to read this. You will find the list with the Eurodos publications in, for example, Radiation Protection Dosimetry, Journal of Radiological Protection, Radiation Measurements, and various uh, medical physics, many various other journals. And just to give you again a flavor how, how many publications Eurodos produces, this is the statistics over the last 10 years, uh, the number of peer-reviewed publications, and if you just calculate the average, it means that rough, very roughly speaking, every six weeks, Eurodos produces a paper for the scientific literature. Training and education is a very important aspect for Eurodos as well. If you read the mission carefully, this is very important. And so, it, became a tr it has become a tradition that Eurodos organizes a one-day winter school as part of the annual meetings. And just to give you an idea on, on the topics this year, for example, the winter school was a medical application of internal dosimetry. Last year, dosimetry for epidemiological cohorts. The year before on Fukushima and so on and so forth. And sometimes occasionally Eurodos also organizes workshops, and in those workshops, the scientific results of a working group produced by a working group are presented, and then the proceedings are published again in the peer-reviewed in a peer-reviewed journal. Just to give you a few examples. The last one was on dosimetry for second cancer risk estimation in radiotherapy. Already a few a uh, few years ago, then accelerator radiation protection and shielding, cosmic radiation and air crew exposure and so on and so forth. And a very important element of Eurodos work is to organize intercomparison exercises to support the harmonization of the symmetry within Europe and more recently even beyond Europe. And this means that Eurodos organizes intercomparison exercises on a regular basis as needed for example, on whole body, whole body photon dose meters, or fingering uh, dose meters for photons, whole body neutron exposures, on active electronic dose meters, passive area dose meters for environmental dosimetry. So there are various topics, and as needed, those topics will be addressed by intercomparison exercises. Just to give you one example, the last one on whole body dose meters took place just last year. And there were 86 participants from 36, 36 countries, and six of those countries were from beyond Europe. So we also try to support the harmonization of the symmetry worldwide, if you, if you, if you like. The results, so those uh, intercomparison exercises are organized by Eurodos. Then the results are evaluated by Eurodos team and then the results are discussed among the participants during the annual meetings. So this is another feature of the annual meetings. And then the results are public, published in the scientific literature to give an overview how the performance is in Europe on the symmetry. But in detail, they are also published as a Eurodos report. So again, if you are interested, just visit the website and download what you are interested in. This is just an example, a list of Eurodos reports on the various intercomparison exercises that took place uh, recently. Training activities, all the working groups are involved in training activities. And this is a rather new one, which a new format. This is a learning network for dosimetry services, individual monitoring services. We started this actually this year for the first time. And the idea is that members from individual uh, dosimetry services come together and discuss the problems they have, very specific problems if, if necessary, and exchange their, their experience. We are also going to launch a forum on our website. Once you get a password, you can log in to the forum and then you can exchange among the group your experience with 
the symmetry if, uh, if, if necessary and if you're interested in. Another example from this year, this was a, a training course, Eurodos training course on the European technical recommendations for monitoring individuals occupationally exposed to external radiation. This took place in Italy, in Firenze this year. Another example which took place this year, a training course on uncertainty analysis for retrospective dissymmetry and associated research, which was jointly organized by IRSN and Eurodos and fund sponsored by, by CONCERT. So these are typical examples and all the working groups in their, in their specific field always think of what they could, can do to, to improve, to train people, to improve young people um, and to make, make the field attractive also to young people. For those of you who were here this morning, you al already heard a little bit about strategic research agendas. Jacques Repissar mentioned that uh, quite intensively. Well, Eurodos is one of the research platforms here in Europe developing a strate strategic research agenda, meaning that we are thinking what research is needed for the future in Europe to improve the dosimetry of ionizing radiation. And we did that exercise with input from all the working groups. And then, as usual, we wrote a Eurodos report on that, very detailed. And we wrote a summary on that and published this in the peer-reviewed literature. This was the first step of the process. And the other platforms are working in a similar way. The second step was then we wanted to get input from stakeholders. And so we thought, who is, who are, which institutions are stakeholders for the symmetry of ionizing radiation, for, uh, uh, for the symmetry, yes. And so we invited um, those organizations to a one-day workshop. That time it was organized in Munich, close to Munich, Germany. And at this very day, we had 24 representatives from 24 international organizations discussing the needs, the future needs in dosimetry. And I think this was the first time in history that so many international organizations gathered and discussed the dosimetry of ionizing radiation. So we consider this as a very successful uh, um, exercise. And again, we have summarized the views of the stakeholders, of the 23, 24 stakeholders, in a workshop report, which was published just two or three weeks, a couple of weeks ago. And we are now in the process to use this information to update and improve the strategic research agenda, the first version. We are currently improving and we will write a second version, which is now then also will include all the input we got from our stakeholders. And ICRP obviously was also there because ICRP is, we also consider ICRP as a stakeholder for, for the symmetry. So what are the future activities? Well, of course, we are planning various additional intercomparison exercises on photons and neutrons, various training actions, interactions with other players in radiation protection. So this event this afternoon demonstrates that we, have, we do have close contact to ICRP. Of course, we also have close contacts to ICRU. We are currently together with ICRU working on, on a joint report. We have some connections with the European Association of Nuclear Medicine. So we are looking forward if, if there is any idea from the audience, any new, uh, any organization who would be interested, we are happy to cooperate. Stakeholder involvement will be continued. Of course, the involvement in the concert project. This is the joint uh, uh, funding action in Europe to support research in radiation protection in the field of radiation protection will continue. Of course, we have a, a number of parallel events from concert during this week. We will develop our research agenda further and develop a roadmap for Eurodos. And this is will then together with the roadmaps of the other platforms uh, form a, a roadmap for Europe. So that's the plan at least. We will have very close actions with our sister platforms, Melody Alliance, Neris, and Euromed, and you will hear a lot more about those, uh, about those platforms during this 
symposium. Now, I hope you got interested, and if you are interested in more details, you will get a lot of more information at the next annual meeting in 2018. And I'm very happy that I can announce here that the next annual meeting of Eurodos will take place from the 5th to 8th of February next year in Lisbon, in Portugal. And again, we have uh, Eurodos Council will meet, the General Assembly will meet, the working groups will meet for several days, and we will have a winter school. And the topic of the next winter school will be application of physical and computational phantoms in those assessment. So I hope I can welcome you all next year in Portugal, in Lisbon, to our annual meeting. And with this, I would like to finish and thank you for your attention. Thank you. <laughs>